Hello, this is Edgar from the Arceo Financial Group, and this time I'm going to be talking about this special 770 account. I have received hundreds of emails and calls from people all over the US asking me about it, so I want to create this short video to explain what this is, how does it work, and why it is so secret, quote unquote. Now, you probably already know that this is not more than a whole life insurance with a twist. What is that twist? Well, we want to maximize our living benefits and minimize the debt benefit. So it needs to have some riders in place. Uh, it needs to be from a mutual insurance company and it works much better if it is a non-direct recognition company. Right now I won't talk about those things, but I want to talk more about what I mean by living benefits instead of debt benefits. And how does that look like? Uh, also, the uh, why the name 770? It's probably just an abbreviation of the IRS section that talks about li the uh, life insurance, the section 7702. So there you go. Let's uh, get started with um, a quick lesson on life insurance so we will understand how this 770 account using life insurance works. So let's say that we have a 45-year-old male that wants to get a million dollars life insurance. Okay, so the bottom line that represents the minimal amount that you can pay, and the top represents the maximum amount that you can pay. Now, question who decides what the minimal premium you can pay for a million dollars of life insurance? Well, that will be the company, the life insurance company. The company has actuaries who basically calculate the math, figure out the numbers, uh, they calculate the least amount that they can charge for a million dollars of life insurance for a 40-year-old male and make money, right? Now let's go to the top. Who decides what is the maximum premium that you can pay for a million dollars life insurance? Besides you, of course. So the answer is the government or the IRS. Now, let's think about that for a moment. The fact that the federal government cares about how much money you put into a life insurance policy, what does that tell you? It must be good, right? It must be good when we talk about, what, taxes. In 1986, the federal government drew a line with two laws the TAMRA and the DEFRA. You don't need to know much about these two, but these two laws created this, this line right here. Now, uh, the federal government said, if we don't draw this line, nobody's going to do what we want them to do, which is what? Where does the federal government encourage us to put our money? On qualified plans, like an IRA, a 401k, a uh, 403b. Why? Well, because in 1986, people could put their money there on this uh, life insurance and have liquidity over their money at any time with tax deferred growth and tax-free distributions. So they drew up a line. They said, this is too good. We can't let them uh, keep doing this. So why do they want you to put your money on qualified plans? What do they do? Well, they defer the tax, right? Now, are they just doing that because it defers the tax? No, they do that. They want you to do that because it also defers the tax calculation. Now, to explain this a little bit more, um, I'm going to come up with a quick illustration. Let's assume that you come to my office and say, hey, Edgar, I want to borrow $10,000. And I will say, well, sure. I sign a check on your name and I give it to you right away. Now, what is the first question you're going to ask me? You're going to be like, okay, well, that's nice of you, but how much interest are you going to make me pay, right? And I'm going to say, well, I'm in good shape right now. I don't really need the money that much, but I know that at some time in my life, I'm going to need some money. And when I know what amount that will be, then I will know how much I want to charge you. <laughs> what will you do? You will probably hand me back the check as fast as you could and say, you know, 
I don't need the money that bad after all. Well, that is what the federal government is doing with these qualified plans. Yes, we do get a tax deduction, but we don't save taxes. That's a lie, we just defer them. So we will possibly be in a higher tax bracket. If I will ask you right now, do you think taxes are going to go up or are they going to go down or they are going to stay the same? Everybody tells me, oh, Edgar, no, it's going to go up. So there you go. So the Fed wants us to do uh, the qualified plans, defer the taxes, but they didn't like how life insurance was working, so they drew that line. Um, so with those new rules, what they said is that there must be a balance of debt benefit uh, and, and cash or, or premiums. So I'm just going to put an example. These are not real numbers, but just for illustration purposes, let's say that for this individual to get $1 million of life insurance, the minimum amount that he can pay is, let's say, uh, $2,000 a year. That is term insurance, uh, by the way. Um, and for a $1 million uh, debt benefit, you can also pay $40,000 on that contract. Uh, so the the uh, the federal government says, uh, you know, there's most, there must be a, a balance between the debt benefit and the premium. So they are saying if you go over this amount, in our case forty thousand dollars, then we will treat your policy the same way we we, tr we treat uh, these other uh, plans over here, the uh, IRA, four hundred three Bs, four hundred one Ks. And, uh, and they call that a MEC, a Modified Endowment Contract. So if you pass that line, that's going to be a Modified Endowment Contract, okay? Which means that you're going to have to pay a penalty, uh, you cannot touch it before uh, 59 and a half, you lose liquidity, using control, you know, all those things. So let's forget about insurance for a second, okay? If you could get everything you want for a place to park your money, anything at all, what will that be? Uh, well, I guess you will want to have some uh, tax deferred growth, right? We don't want to be paying capital gains and income taxes and, and receive a 1099 on the mail, right? Also, it would be nice to have some tax-free distributions, right? Unlimited contributions that you uh, so, so nobody tells you how much you can put in. Uh, a good rate of return. No penalties. Uh, protected from creditors. That's a good one. So if they sue you, they cannot touch your cash value. That, that would be nice. Um, that you can use your funds as collateral. To have liquidity, use and control over your money. And to be deductible, right? So let's say that you want to park $40,000 a year. Um, now, you understand that for a life insurance company to talk you into putting $40,000 into this contract uh, and they will only give you a, thousand, uh, a million dollars of coverage that you could have done it with just $2,000, they're going to have to come up with a lot of benefits. And those benefits are listed right here. All of those things that you're looking for are in a life insurance company at this MEC limit. Except one, it is not deductible. Now, at the top of the line, the policy performs the best. Uh, <clears throat> and you understand that anything less than that, then your focus is not going to be on the cash accumulation of benefits, but the focus is more on the... Um, on the uh, debt uh, protection. So let's compare the benefits with a qualified plan. Let's see, if you get an IRA, for example, for 1K, uh, tax deferred growth, yes. Tax free distributions, no. All limited contributions, no. Competitor ra rate of return, eh, could be. No penalties, no. Protected uh, from from creditors, perhaps depending on the state that you live in. Collateral or leverage, no. Liquidity use and control, no. Deductible, yes. 
So we got three, maybe four out of nine. Yes, tax deductible is good. Tax defer is good. But how much are they going to charge you in later years? Uh, now, what most uh, everybody is doing on these days, they always want to get this $2,000 for the maximum debt benefit that is a million dollars. They want to pay the minimal premium, right? They want to get a uh, term life insurance. Some others may get a whole life insurance, but it's, it is close to the bottom line. It's not even close to the MEC line at all. It's like somewhere here. So they are not going to have any cash value for, for many years. They're not going to see these benefits for many years. So if we use a whole life contract and we choose a level benefit, um, the level benefit meaning a million dollars of, of debt benefit, then the government will put a restriction, right, of how much money you can put in. But if we choose an increasing benefit, which we can uh, do with some writers, increasing benefit, that means that your life, uh, the, your debt benefit is going to be increasing every year. So if your, if your debt benefit increases every year, that means that the MEC line is going to change as well every year. And we can stockpile as much money as we can. Well, not as much, but a lot more. Um, because he, he, the debt benefit just keeps growing. Um, now, I have seen many policies. I have received many policies. Uh, on, on, they have been sending me a lot of emails. They have been asking me about my opinion. And that my, the majority of them are not in this MEC limit. They may have an increasing debt benefit, yes, but uh, the cash grows so slow that makes it a horrible investment to put your, your money into it, to, to be honest with you. So when a lot of uh, financial gurus talks, uh, talk about uh, whole life insurance and they say that this is the worst investment ever, they are right because they are just looking at the normal whole life insurance that you get um, you know, with your normal insurance agent. They are not talking about what we are doing here, maximizing your living benefits and minimizing your debt benefit and putting you on the MEC line. Uh, so I hope you were able to understand now how this 770 account works. And um, so this is it for today. I'll be posting more videos later about it. But if you have any questions, please just send us an email um, or give us a call. God bless you.